you know, I was saying um, that what, what bothers me is the, the simple fact that we, we have this challenge of, of, of people not having a sense of what it means to work at Indonesia. And uh, I think the bigger, the bigger problem is how do we, how do we get people to, to understand that when you work at Indonesia, whatever you do has to be informed by our mission. It's the older people, not older necessarily in terms of age, but who've been at UNISA for some time, who struggle with the change, changing from one way of doing to another way of doing, um, to keep up with all the changes. And, and I suppose that's why we have a change management unit, partly. But, but the idea being that we have to keep changing the way we do things to improve. And that is why the E has been added to the O D L. Denzel. Oh, he's here. Hi, oh, Denzel. How are you doing? Fine, thanks. Uh, welcome. No, thanks. Okay, so, you want to check with that? Well, I think <coughs> part of the problem is how do you get new people in and have them enthusiastic, but get old people with institutional knowledge to, to share that institutional <coughs> knowledge without necessarily breaking the enthusiasm, yeah. um, because I think that's always the delicate balancing act mm. that exists. So, so let's talk about this institutional knowledge, what you call it. We have been open, we've always been since the 19th century, no, the 19th century, we've been distance education. So the distance has remained constant. That's something that has remained constant over, the, over time. What has also remained constant, and I, I believe Professor Moche referred to yeah. it in, in her video, yes. is that we've always been accredited. Mm -hmm. So we, we're not a fly-by-night. We are accredited. We've been around for a long reputable. time. We are reputable. But we have to be agile and keep up with changes. So, so the distance has always had to be bridged by some kind of te technology. Yeah. We started with ink, handwritten pens, mm. uh, assignments, even tutorial letters, delivered by post, mm. delivered by donkey cart and horse yeah. mail to post. And those of us who've been here for some time know what challenges we've had with the post office in the past. So we've added the E as one new technology to mm. change. Well, I think that's important because the shift forces us to rethink teaching and learning. And in changing this gap in technology mediating the gap, it forces us to rethink our student and mm -hmm. reconfigure our student. Because often we have this idea that our student is at a distance from the institution. Mm -hmm. But with technology, it mediates a distance, closes the gap. And what we now find is that the student becomes part of a learning community, which means that we need to shift from just seeing the student as somebody who posts an assignment at a store or wherever it is. So now think of the student as part of a learning experience that we're designing. Mm. And I think that that word experience and the student's experience is very important. Yeah. But what we also have to look at is how do we <coughs> use the E in different ways to, to reach different kinds of students. But that, what that means that we have to know the student. We have to know who they are, where they are, what kind of access they have, and, and how they relate to technology. And it comes into <coughs> something that Professor Moche also said in her video about making sure that our students are digitally literate. Mm -hmm. And I think also making sure our staff is digitally literate mm -hmm. because it's sort mm -hmm. of two sides of the same coin. Exactly. We have to show our students a way of being and technology, whether it's post or yeah. Internet or VR is never neutral. And I think that's where the problem is. Mm. Yeah. The problem basically, uh, and I think we touched on that in our previous discussion, I think the problem is exactly that. We, we, we have a, a bigger challenge of staff themselves yeah. not being, and there are, yes, we spoke about three pillars. It's, mm. it's digital literacy, digital proficiency, and, and digital citizenship. citizenship. Mm. Those three pillars, our students come with them. Remember, they are born into technology. And, but our staff, so how do we, the question now, as we are sitting here talking about, about this campaign, how do, we, how do we get all these pillars and parameters together? How do we drive the process forward? And I think that should be the key. How do we, how do we ignite that fire? How do we get people to want to come to Indonesia? And there's a major challenge too. You know, the challenge is that 
we should be mindful of the fact that we are no longer alone in this space. We have competitors, and we tend to take our competitors lightly. Our competitors are involved in very aggressive, um, they are very aggressively marketing. I mean, across the border here, we have the unit of, 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 of distance learning in the Elizabethan here in the School of Education. Mm. They are doing massive work. Mm. If we are not careful, if we cannot get our boat steered in the right direction, we will find that mm. we are facing very difficult challenges, which is why I think the whole idea of, of, of campaigning mm. to make distance learning a worthwhile thing, UNISA being a place to be, is very important. I think this is the crux of this discussion. Mm. How do we get it going? Mm. How do, we, how, do we, how do we stimulate that? Yeah. How do we position UNISA? How do we not just make UNISA a place to be? How do we make UNISA the ideal place to be? And an exciting <coughs> place Absolutely. to be. Exactly. And I think innovation is key. And one of the challenges with UNISA is that we need to have that space, a secure space, where academics feel, I can fail, even if I innovate, but I can always try to innovate. Mm. And I think that's the problem that we need. We need to create the space where academics can be free uh, would to say, okay, let's see what my student court is. Mm -hmm. And academics know their students best at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and I think that's key, is to create the space where academics are comfortable. And part of our, uh, our job opportunity is to how do we in-skill academics and motivate them to move mm -hmm. in that direction. Mm -hmm. which, which brings me to one of the letters in the ODEL, which is learning. Mm -hmm that we have changed it to, to from education distance, education to learning. But sometimes we think it's just the learning of the student. It's also the learning of the student and the staff. And we also sometimes think that learning is cumulative, like I build block by block on what I know. And we forget sometimes, as we learn in decoloniality, that sometimes learning, you have to unlearn something first and relearn something new. Yeah. And you have to, to examine your own praxis as a teacher in ODEL. Continuously keep asking yourself questions. What kind of bias am I bringing to, to my class, to my teaching? What kind, who am I excluding? And maybe just to focus on the E again, um, in the recent Teaching and Learning Festival, there was one of the presentations which focused very much on including students. But the inclusion was based on very high data-driven um, kind of interaction with students. So, so wealthier students who can afford data will be able to, to participate in that. But students who, who struggle with data because of cost will, will not be able to make use of those opportunities. So I think academics have to learn things about data and what it costs and, and to, to ask themselves very critical questions about do I really need what we call a talking head video exactly. Exactly. if I can actually achieve the same thing with just an audio. Mm. Have, yeah. a, have a still picture mm. of myself so that the students can see who I am exactly. but then have <laughs> both the audio and a transcript for disabled students exactly. so that we, we, we make sure that our inclusive, inclusivity is across differently able students as well as ac across differently resourced students that we don't because the temptation with the E is to go for gadgets and big things and bells and whistles stay at the minimum E but use it as best as you can but that's that's the key <coughs> you have now identified I think one of the most fundamental pieces if we have to go E this morning we we're talking about distributive learning Mm -hmm. we, are, we are distributing. Mm -hmm. Now if we have to go E, I think one of the things that we should be talking about is how do we create access to data? That, that should be the pillar. When people register to UNISA, they must know that there is something within our learning management system that allows them to access OER and not to, not to incur expenses because the system provides for that. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that's a key issue. You mentioned, I mean, if you look at population demographics, you, you have learners who are in metropolitan cities, the mm -hmm. data is, but we are, we are not, not that we are not concerned with them, but we are concerned with access and accessibility means, what about those that are in the outreaches, in the rural? Mm -hmm. How do we create a system that 
that enables those students who are in the hinterlands to say, I can be part of UNISA. We have many agreements with telecenters, with public libraries, and they, the, our library has the mobile library. So there are initiatives, but academics need to know. Yes. They need to inform <coughs> themselves about what the university does, right. rather than just to say, oh, I have too many student, rural students, exactly. they don't have access. Rather think of ways of how to do this yeah creatively and we yes. get back to yes. the and, and I mean that, that's important because the moment we talk and that's become an excuse mm -hmm. where we stagnate progress Absolutely. and uh, and that's where it goes back to your question if we start designing for learner experience as opposed to just instructional design mm -hmm. and we start thinking of the contextual student in our context sorry, and that's what makes the E uh, in Odell quite important for us is that we as an institution can take ownership of it and say this is how we define the E in terms of access to our students in terms of contextualizing mm -hmm. our learning mm -hmm. and if we start moving that direction I think it's an encouragement for academics to say I said, how do I then design using that access as a question? And goes back to what you said earlier, is that it's impossible to have a one hour video playing as mm. part of a tutorial. Yeah. So yeah. we need to play those questions out and say, if I'm designing, what kind of design am I using? You wanted to come in. I think no, you, so, you, you're so being overshadowed. I, I, I sort of have two, question, you know, two thoughts. The one is that, you know, it is, it's, it's a real problem that students in rural mm. areas and, you know, poor students don't have access and it's something Digital we divide. need to we need to address that but also the flip side of that is we are doing our students an injustice if they walk away with the degree and they're not digital mm -hmm. literate so so, yeah. so so there's two sides to look at this in terms of justice mm, and it, there's another part to that um, we used to prescribe textbooks mm -hmm. but our, our policy on prescribed textbooks says we shouldn't at first year mm -hmm. level with some exceptions that we have to get approval for. In the past, students had to pay for those textbooks. So now they have to pay for data. So, so the, the, the sort of reasoning that we shouldn't expect our students to pay for anything is also not right. It's part of studying, unfortunately, that you have to pay for certain things. Um, and, and one of the things that we need to engage with is that the funders, the student funding part, actually talks to devices and data. Yeah. But and isn't that's it, something it, we still have to work on, I think. But that brings in another agenda mm. into this discussion. How do we formalize, and this is where Dr. Sulema Sela would be very helpful, mm. how do we formalize the open educational resources? Mm. Because that's something that exactly. we need to be strong on. Open educational resources, there are companies right now that are, that are making resources available yes. freely. Yes. And the question is, how are we plugging into that? For me, that's a useful way of... of, of trying to subvert the idea that data is expensive. Yeah. Let's, let's get agreements mm -hmm. broken in o, o, OER yeah. so that then our students can access. Exactly. These are, so those are, those are, for me, those are the critical debates that we should be yeah. engaging in. But you know there's <coughs> another side to OER. Yeah. Yes. And I'm sorry if I'm going to no. take your own advice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm aware of that. <laughs> I think Denzel and I are on the same page here. Um, we have to be careful though when we, when we talk OERs that we don't wholesale import yes. OERs from Australia. America, Australia, the UK, that is not relevant yeah. no. and doesn't speak to our context. Yeah. No. And, and um, we must really try also to get our academics to start thinking of producing their own um, exactly. African contextual context -based. and no data <laughs> consuming. It, it, doesn't, it goes beyond just getting academics to do it. How do we teach our students the practice of openness. Mm. You know, we are o open distance. Yeah. You know, so how do we have um, students create rather than mm. regurgitate what mm. we tell them? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's something where we can strengthen OERs for ourselves, mm. Mm. Uh, mm. Is, is by looking at, yeah. at students creating yeah. for and, us, and I think that's with us. And I think that's important because then we become, we bring the students into a partnership and co-creation of knowledge. Co-creation. I think that's where we are in terms of, you know, openness, mm -hmm. openness and open education institution, is how do we leverage our students? Our students are all over the, all over the country, mm -hmm. I mean, even outside the African context. And they are at the art of the community. I mean, for example, mm -hmm. they can get into the community and research things where it will cost us as researchers to get into that space. Mm -hmm. So how do we bring them into the space and partner with them? And I think that's also a pedagogical shift in our design. Yeah, yeah. Um, Denzel, let's, let's just continue with the pedagogical part of it. And some people don't like the word pedagogy, pedagogical, yes. but it's basically just how you teach. How, how do you do, how do you get the content, the skills, the values to your students? But you need to also explain 
You, you the education. <laughs> yes, I was, going to, I, was going, I was going to say, you need to also understand that there is a, there's a distinction that has to be drawn between pedagogy on the one hand and andragogy. Mm. And, and that's, that's, I don't want to have to get caught up in terminologies, but we do pedagogy when we deal with younger people in, in the classes. Okay. But when, because UNISA is, a, is, a, is an open, is a traditionally, For we adults. deal with mature young adults, mm. and that's where the significance of andragogy mm. comes in, mm. self-motivated, self-driven people. Self so we, we, and, and there's a tendency to keep saying, no, we, we should address pedagogy, nothing wrong with that. Mm. But again, in terms of the context, mm. The context in, in, in distance it's learning is adults, and adults, mm. you can only refer to them as people who are self-taught. That's where andragogy comes in. So it's very important that we yeah. get that clear, because yeah. once we miss it, we can get caught up in terminology that do not have specifics in the, in, the, in the context. Yeah. But what I wanted to come back to is, is the Dean's statement on what ODEL means. And, and part of that is that the student profile, but also the nature of the discipline, <coughs> determines how you're going to implement the E. So so the idea is not to have one explanation of what the E in ODEL <coughs> is, and that everybody, and have a sort of a top-down kind of um, instructions about what you have to do to do the E. Um, that you, as a module leader or as a module team, know, you know your students, you know what it is you're teaching, the nature of your discipline, and, the and, the, and, and then you have to, the how part you now have to adapt to, to what is relevant, what is useful for you in your context. And I think it, it allows so much space for academics to do new things. You know, gone are the days where you have to have a tutorial letter 101, where you have to have a study guide, you have to have only two assignments. We can experiment and we can be very innovative. And I think, I think it's, it creates a kind of, that kind of, you know, academics like to talk about academic freedom. Yeah. Use your academic freedom now to experiment and to do new things. But it's a feature of ODA, it's flexibility. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Trace, it's an agile environment, we're in a very progressive. Mm. And one of the challenges that academics have is that I cannot keep my study material up to date. But this allows us, exactly. it actually addresses the one of the major challenges. Yes. Mm. So, I mean, even with regulations that are changing, we can immediately take it out and bring in a new case study. Mm. How do we get, create the right kind of culture? The, a culture of innovation, a culture of experimentation, a culture of flexibility. But but with that, and, and let me now play with the words, maybe the E can also be excellence. Um, that, that it's not just about technology, it's about doing it excellently. And for that we need, first of all, communities of practice, where we actually talk and share. And, and I think in the past what you would often have is an academic sitting in their offices with their door closed, not talking to anybody. And, and, and I think that's a culture that we should work against it's in our tower. spaces. Yeah. And it's ivory, it's yeah. like ivory office, yeah. ivory yeah. tower. Exactly. And, and so, so community, how do we build those communities? Mm -hmm. But then, then to also get to these cultures of excellence, cultures where, where we can stand up anyway to peer review, mm -hmm. but even beyond that to be cutting edge, like you talked about our competitors yes. earlier on. We mustn't be just looking what our competitors are doing and, and saying they're doing better than we are. No, we we must stage. be leading yeah, we set and, stage, and exactly. UNISA in some ways does lead. So many people are really getting left behind yeah. and that's exactly where we need to say this is, this is a, a digital, globally connected network. Castell yeah. says it better. We are, so, we are in a global world. If you can't keep up, you're going to be left behind, yeah. but we do not want people who are our, our, exactly. our staff exactly. to be left behind. Yeah. How do we get them on board? Ingrid, I need to... <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> she's been saying how she wants to talk, <laughs> and, that, and people are getting in there. <laughs> you know, what, what I'm just thinking is, you know, doing it that way, what it really requires is somebody that, that is confident in themselves enough to, to fail. Yeah. 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 Yes, and exactly, yeah. an environment that allows failure. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and helps you when you fail to, 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 to not fail. Yeah. We, we changed our honours to, to, to be semesterized, mm -hmm. all of our modules to be semesterized, and it was a little bit scary, and we did it this mm -hmm. year for the mm -hmm. first time, and one of the things that we thought would happen is that would uh, lower our dropout rate, um, and then suddenly my dropout rate was much higher. Um, to start with, it, uh, we, we kind of gathered students again, mm -hmm. and they... they mm -hmm. it, it didn't look so bad in the end, but 
that was one of the things mm. that that mm. was like it was a little bit scary because I was like, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, you know the college is the mutation yeah. on the line a little bit, mm. but it is, and you know, in the end, it, it wasn't as big a failure as I thought yeah. it would be. And actually, what we're doing now is our numbers are still higher than mm. than what they were the last year, um, but. We, uh, what it seems to look like is that we will have more students completing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we had yeah. a bit of a bump right at the beginning with more students falling out because suddenly, you know, it's maybe a lot. workload. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. workload, but also, you know, you, you were challenged to do lots but right see, now. The, you wouldn't have reached there if you didn't start in the first place. Yes, that's, the point. <laughs> that's where the experimentation comes. But the important thing is that allowing to fail exactly. and the support exactly. even from management yeah. Yeah. to say it's okay Ingrid <laughs> don't panic maybe just to to yeah. add another thought and it's not really wrapping up it's just adding it's another thought yeah. is, is that another dimension mm. is is around the scholarship mm -hmm. that that we should approach the E mm -hmm. as part of our scholarship as as being intellectually challenging mm -hmm. as as a possibility for research opportunities yeah. um, where, where you come in with your chair and and also to to look at how do we how do we get the good things that we do out there mm. to show that UNISA is indeed cutting edge. Two things. Yesterday we had Professor Mabwe. Remember how I don't know what to call it hostile, but how uncomfortable she was with the E. Mm. And she said because we are doing distance and people are away automatically. The E is embedded. Mm. Mm. Today I had a meeting, I was in a meeting where we were planning the research week mm. and it was convened by the vice principal. And Paul Princeton was saying, we need to redefine the E. We shouldn't be talking about the E now. The whole world is now talking about distributive learning. Mm. So maybe those are the kind of things that we should mm. be thinking about. And that, that would be some of the things that we bring in as we redefine ourselves. Yes. Because um, I think we were, we were putting Atabasca in, in the picture, but Atabasca, you know, has had problems. Mm. And we're saying, mm. we want to, we want to, where did they get it wrong? And they are the ones who coined the idea that rather than E, let's go distributive, we are distributing. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Thank you.